Now I like simple plugins that do something and do it really, really well. And today we'll be taking a look at a plugin that does just that. Now, Draw Attention is a simple WordPress plugin that can make interactive images in a matter of seconds. Now, this is the type of thing that's perfect for e-commerce, architects' plans, estate agents, and hundreds of other useful applications. Now, in this short introduction video, I'll take you through the basics of how the plugin works and how to easily add it to almost any page on your website. Now, if this sounds interesting to you, let's just jump over to the Draw Attention website and take a quick look over the plugin and the pricing. Now, don't worry though, there is a free version that will let you set things up and test it out on very simple sites. So as always, let's kick this off by taking a look at the plugin's website and seeing basically what it does. Now, there are two versions of Draw Attention. There's the free version, which allows you to use one image, and then there's the pro or paid for version, which kind of gets rid of any kind of limitation at all. Before we take a look at the pricing, let's take a look at the feature set and what we can do with it. So this is the homepage for Draw Attention. As you can see, we've got a hand-drawn kind of map of a property. Now what we can do is we can take our mouse over any of these and you see we now start to get highlights over the different rooms. When we click on those, we open up a pop-up in this example that shows us more information about that particular room. So we've got the kitchen, for example, we'll see photographs of the kitchen. Go to the living room, photographs of the living room. You kind of get the picture. So it's a super easy plugin. If you have a use for this, I haven't found one that's easier than this, so I think it's definitely worth checking out and taking a look at it. So we've seen basically what it does. What about the pricing options? Like I say, you do have that free version, so if you want to test this out or you just need to have one image, the free version could be perfect for you. However, if you have a client that requires this kind of thing or projects you think this could be useful for, I mean, Architects is one of those things that springs to mind, or any kind of like company that deals with floor plans, training material, all those kinds of cool things. So we've got two options. We've got unlimited, which is unlimited websites, unlimited interactive maps, etc., 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 or the single, which is one website. So for $74, you can have this on one website with unlimited interactive images and unlimited clickable areas. So whichever one you think is going to be useful if you require more than what the free version gives you. Okay, so now that we've seen basically what the plugin does, let's take a look at how easy it is to actually insert this information into your site, create your first maps, create your first sort of interactive images, those kinds of things. So let's take a look by jumping over to the dashboard of WordPress. So once you've installed the plugin, you've got a new section in the dashboard of WordPress called Draw Attention. Inside there, we have some really simple options. All images will show us a listing of all of the previously created images using the Draw Attention plugin. Add new, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then you've got your license and support information where you can drop in your license if you purchase the pro version and you can import and export. So let's take a look at how we create a new Draw Attention so let's click on add new and from there you can see we now get a series of different options. First thing we can do is give this a name. So we're just going to call this test attention. Doesn't really matter what we're going to call it. Now underneath that we've got the general settings, we've got the highlight styling and we've got a couple of other options. On the right hand side we've got the area to load our image in. We can choose a predefined color scheme if you want to go down a quick and easy way of just styling things. And you also have then the option for the layout. In other words, what happens when you either hover over, click where it's going to be, how we interact with it and so on. You've also then got the option for how do you want to show more information? Is it going to be requiring a click or is it simply going to be an on hover effect? You know, up to you how you want to work with this, depend upon what you want to create. So first of all, let's just, just drop an image into here. So let's open up our media library and let's find an image that I think is going to be useful. So I'm going to use this as a sort of page where we've got an image that we can select various different components of the image and see the pricing information and so on. So it could be great for a lifestyle kind of site where you've got photographs of a layout and you may want to promote various aspects of that layout, you know, tables, chairs, furnishings, fixtures, so on, and then link that through to products on the site or maybe to an affiliate kind of site, Amazon, something like that. So let's just set the featured image. And you can see that now pulls the image in for us. Now, what can we do with this? Well, once you've done that, we now have the option to start controlling how this all works. But before we start doing anything to this, let's just quickly save this draft. And then we've got the plain image and we're ready to start working. So you'll see now, once we've saved this as a draft, we get an extra area called hotspot areas. And this is where we can start to create those clickable or hoverable areas 
in the image. So you can see at the moment we've got clickable area one. If we expand that, you'll see there's our image inside there. We can scroll across with this quite easily. So if you've got a larger, higher resolution image, then you can easily select the areas that you want. So let's take a look. We're gonna create our first hotspot. So all we need to do is just simply start clicking on the screen and you can see we start to place points. So let's choose this TV that's on the wall, first of all. And you can see what happens is we create this area around it. So we've now created a hotspot. And once we create that hotspot, we can then control various aspects of it. So we can give this a title and we'll just say this is the Panasonic DF4300. Doesn't really matter what we're going to call it, but that's the title for it. What's the action? Show more info or go to a URL. So this is, like I say, if you wanted to use this as a on hover to get information, then click through to products on the site or an affiliate site, you can choose the go to URL and then you can drop in the URL you want to your affiliate or your internal linking. We'll just choose this to show more information. Then we can drop in the additional information we want underneath. So we can just say 48 inch LED screen. Doesn't really matter what we're going to put in there. Detail image. Now, if you wanted to have a second image that when someone clicks on this, they find information and they get an image about it. So you may have product images, for example, you can add or upload a file. Now, I don't have anything for this particular TV. So let's just add any image. It doesn't matter. It's more to demonstrate how it works. So we'll just say we're going to have this, which is a kind of placeholder for when we have the product shot of this particular TV. You can see it gives us a preview underneath and we now define the key information for that specific hotspot. So now what we can do is we can minimize that and now we can add another area in. So let's just say this time we're going to do something to do with one of these tables or the sofa or the TV cabinet. Doesn't really matter what we're going to do. So we just go through the same process again. So we'll click and start selecting to create the highlight around this particular image. Now I'm not going to be too picky about this. Now you will notice one thing. We are kind of restricted at this point in time to only being able to work with straight lines. We can't use things like Bezier curves. Now I have spoken to the developers and I'm not the first person to ask about Bezier curves so we can get more feature rich interactive sort of shapes inside here. And hopefully this is something they will look at in a future version of it. So fingers crossed and if more people would like that kind of thing, Maybe you could just get in touch and say you'd love to see Bezier curves as part of the plugin and that'll kind of speed up the process. Whichever way you want to go about it, I still think it's quite cool. Okay, so this is our clickable area number two. Now we can come over, we can give this another title. So we'll just call this TV cabinet. And again, show more information and we'll just call this a black TV cabinet, two meters doesn't really matter what I'm going to put in there. I'm just filling this out with placeholder gibberish. And again, we'll just do a detail image. So we'll just choose another detail image and use that. So we've now created two hotspots inside our image. Now we can set up anything else we want inside here. So let's again, just save the draft. So we commit those changes before we start making any alterations to this. And before we do make any changes, let's just preview this so we can see what it looks like. So there's our image and you can see if we mouse over, we get these highlight effects and the hover information and on the left hand side. If we click, that's where it'll show us the extra information and the any placeholder images or any images for that particular product. Very, very easy indeed to work with. Let's close that down. Now you can see we've got two sections, the general settings for the image background, the title color, text color and so on. So let me just open this up. That's this section on the left hand side, I believe. Then we've also got the default more info. So if you want to put default text inside there, you could do that. You can then control the highlight styling. So at the moment that's set to be white. However, we can set that to a different color. Let's just say we wanted to set that to be blue. We wanted to change the opacity to something like 35%. You can set a border color if you wanted to and a border opacity. So let's set that border opacity to zero. And then we've got things like always show hotspots for this image. And that will just basically leave the hotspots on the image for the entire time. So it doesn't require any user interaction to see that there are hotspots because without those people may just think it's an image. Obviously you can put some information to say, please just mouse over to see the various different things, whatever you wanted to do. But it's nice to see that you've got the option to do that if you wanted to.
You also then got define multiple highlight styles for this image. So you could quite easily create different highlight styles for different types of furniture, different types of items, or every one of them could be a different color. It's entirely up to you. So if we enable that, you can see we now create styles. Open that up and all those same options are inside there. You've also got color schemes which you can choose from. So we can take these from predefined color schemes. Then once you've created that style, you can assign it to any of the hotspot areas. But before you do, you do need to make sure that you hit that save draft or save, publish, whichever option you have. And then what we can do is we can come down to any of these and we can open this up. And then any styles you've created are available inside here. So you can see it says default at the moment. But if we came back up and we just chose to create a different style. So we'll change style one and we'll just call this blue. Actually, just call this red hover change any of the values we want inside this we'll select the highlight color we'll set that to be red we'll drop the opacity down to about 25 percent and we are good to go border color well it's up to us what we want to do with that so we'll just commit that save that draft and then we come back down and we'll choose this panasonic for example and then we can do is we can just change this style and we can say red hover so now that will hover and change color to red so once we've done that, we'll just, again, save our draft. We'll preview this in a new tab, and we should find then that's in red, that's in blue. So you can see it is really easy to customize the way this all works, and it's really quite simple. Now, what other options do we have? Let's come back over into the dashboard. Let's take a look at these options on the right-hand side. We'll come back to color schemes in a moment because I think that's probably the most obvious of all the things. Just simply selecting something in there will change the color scheme that you've got available as a predefined set of colors. Next up, though, the more important thing is the layout. You can see left, right, bottom, top, light box, and tooltip. And what that denotes is the position of this currently left-hand column. So if we come back into this and we say we want to set that to be right, and uh, we'll just save our draft, come back over and refresh this page, that now appears on the right-hand side. And the same kind of goes with the bottom and top. The light box, however, and the tooltip, they're slightly different. So let's just choose light box. You can see that removes the options underneath now for how you want to interact because as a light box, there's only one option. We'll save that draft and we'll come back, save this page. And you'll see now we come over and click, we now get a pop-up light box effect. So really quite simple to do. And again, you know, it's entirely up to you how you'd want to set things up and you can style all those aspects. We come back over and do one more. We'll do the tool tip. And again, you can see we've got, how do you want to show this? Is it going to be click or is it going to be hover? Let's set that to hover because we've seen how the click works. Come back up, save that draft, refresh this page. And we'll see on hover, we now get more information about any of the items that are set up as a hotspot. So all those aspects are incredibly simple to work with. I'm going to set that back to be a light box. And we're going to publish it this time. And we're going to say we're happy with how all of this looks and how it all works. And now we've got this little short code. So we're going to copy that from there. We're going to copy it. And you'll see this again if we come to all images. You'll see all the short codes are listed inside your listing of all the different draw attention images that you've set up. Now we can use anything. So if you're using Elementor, you could use the short code widget. If you're just using Gutenberg, you could use the short code widget or any other page builder to drop that short code in. So let's just test that out. Let's come and create a new page. And from there, we're just simply going to add in a title and we'll publish this page. And what we're going to do is, like I said, we could use the Gutenberg shortcode and easy enough to do. We can just simply come into here to do a search for shortcode. There's our shortcodes. We can add that to our page and then simply drop that shortcode inside there. I'll simply hit update. And once we've done that, we're going to take a preview of this. So we'll just say preview in a new tab, open that up. And there's our image, and we can mouse over any of these and get information about any of them. So you can see it works flawlessly inside there. If we come back over into our page, and this time we just get rid of this. So we'll just delete that from there. We'll remove that block. We'll update our page, and we'll just open this up now with Elementor. And obviously Elementor is probably going to give you a little bit more creativity because you can do more things inside Elementor. But let's just go for the short code drag and drop that into there and paste in our short code. You can see that pulls in the preview of it. We'll update that page and then we'll just to preview the changes. And again, there's our image with our light box effect. And we can just select any of those from there. So it really is a very, very simple plugin. It just works really, really well. And that's for me is the most important thing. I like plugins that do their job 
They do it well and there's no messing about. You don't need to read instruction manuals. You can kind of figure it out within the space of a couple of minutes. And that's exactly what I found with this particular plugin. So if you want to find out more about Draw Attention, I'll drop a link into the description below. This is not sponsored. There's no affiliate kickbacks, nothing at all. I just think it's a cool plugin. So now that we've taken a look at the plugin, what are your thoughts? Could you find a use for this in your toolbox or on a project you may have coming up? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, as always, all of the applicable links for everything I've covered in this video are in the description. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.